who you are as a man. Let's talk about how many women you've been with. Sexually? Yeah, no. Real good job you're doing. We have to go through this thing there together. There are rich teams, and there are poor teams. Then there's 50 feet of crap. And then... You tell Abraham. We're approaching New Year's Eve, New Year's Day in 2011. We're here to count down the best of 2011. <laughs> Hello there, everybody, and thank you once again for tuning in to my favorite website, realscreenreviews.com. And I'm happily joined here by my returning guest critic, aspiring actor from New York City, Chris Bucci. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Nick. It's great to be here. And we're here to count down the top 10, well, we're going to do the top five countdown best of the year. And we got some honorable mentions to throw in there as well. But right. I want to say, once again, thank you for being here. And you want to just get right to it? Yeah, we could. Uh, thanks for having me for this. And I got to oh. be honest, it was pretty exciting when he asked asked me to do this because <laughs> it's nice having them we both see a lot of movies yes but we also have slightly different opinions sometimes absolutely and so it's great to see like a whole different take on this whole thing. and it's happy to have I'm happy to have somebody else's opinion because his take on the top five movies of the year could be as different from my five as from anybody that's out there is watching their top five it's gonna so, scare you yeah. just a little bit so do you want to start you want to start with some honorable mentions yeah, yeah. I have actually quite a yeah. lot of them yeah we, um, we, we actually wrote them down you know? I, I liked a lot of movies this year and and when I I sat down and I wrote uh, my list for this particular mm -hmm. episode. I just found a whole bunch of others that I liked. I just couldn't quite put them in that top five. Well, throw but, some uh, out there. Okay, I had some comedies. I got to give props to Bridesmaids. I love Bridesmaids. Because I loved it and I did not think I was going to like it as much as I did. I saw it a couple times and it's I It's like it. The Hangover, the first one. It's like it really a good, is. It's a very good movie, but it's like The Hangover, I think, with girls in it. It was very well done. I agree, I agree. Um, I got to give props to Tower Heist. That one didn't get too much notice. No. But I like Brett Ratner movies. And Fun I movie. thought it it was fun and I thought everyone in it had a moment instead of each one of them taking over. I thought no, with all absolutely. those stars I love in, Alan Alda. Be... Alan Alda's a great villain. I agree. He's a great actor. He's a great villain. And Eddie Murphy actually was really good and he didn't overpower everyone else. No, he really didn't. He, he let everybody be funny. Right. Yes. Uh, I also really enjoyed Crazy Stupid Love. That was a really that, good romantic comedy. That is, that's the number one on my honorable oh, mention yeah. list. That just missed the top five. I Me think too. this is exceptional filmmaking at its absolute best yep. and that there's a surprise, and I'm not going to give it away, and you don't really see it coming. There's a uh -uh. surprise at the end of that movie, and it is just flooring. It's yeah. wonderful. The whole movie is wonderful. Emma Stone is she can fantastic. Do no wrong. She can do no wrong. And I Gosling can do no wrong. And I love Steve Carell. He yeah. always seems to do a movie a year that I just really, really enjoy. Right. He's awesome. Crazy Stupid Love was fantastic. Now, we just talked about this before the, the movie, the, uh, before this episode was shot, because we just saw it. It was uh, Mission Impossible that's, Ghost Protocol. Do you have that, too? That's also on my list of honorable mentions. I was burned out on the Mission Impossible series, and have to be honest when i saw the trailer i was mm -hmm. like eh, i don't know if i'm ready let's leave tom cruise in, in tropic thunder you know what i mean <laughs> uh, but i tell you what it was a tremendously well put together action thriller i it loved is it this wonderful breath of fresh air yep. and credit director brad bird the director of the <laughs> disney's the incredibles <laughs> that when i saw the incredibles i thought it was not just an exceptional animated movie i thought it was an exceptional action film oh, i thought it was sure. an exceptional superhero film i thought it was just an exceptional movie altogether yep. And he has made the transition to live action with this film as as brilliantly and fluidly it as you could great. possibly expect. There is one great scene after another in Mission Impossible. One original action scene after another. It's I just fantastic. give a lot of credit. The story's very basic, but the action scenes that encompass that story yeah. are just breathtaking and original and fantastic. And I think they've breathed a new life into this franchise that you sure. said I think was a little stale before they got their hands on it. And when it ends, it almost ends with a new team. So they could easily yeah. do another one. And I'd watch but this you know team. What, though, I don't know. <clears throat> he oh. didn't exactly pass off the torch. Well, I, wouldn't, right. I wouldn't exactly say that. He passed so. off the phones. Yeah. Um, I want to mention these three in a row because I like them all for this different reasons. X-Men First Class, Thor, and Captain America. I thought were three great superhero movies, mm -hmm. but for different reasons. To me, X-Men didn't even feel like a summer blockbuster. It's a well-produced movie. The X-Men First movie. Class is one of the better films that I saw, I think, yep. this year. That was actually also on my list yeah, of X-Men First Class. The Michael but, Fassbender steals every moment of oh, every yeah. second in, in that it's movie. Fantastic. He is, He shines through a really, really credible cast, but he shines through far greater than anybody yeah. else, and I think he steals the show and every the, moment that he's on and screen. And the script is great. It's not like a oh, typical... A great story. Like it, you know what I mean, though? It doesn't have a lot of high-budget, over-the-top action sequences that you would expect in a summer movie. Right. It's actually a really well-done film all the way right. around but we're like Thor and Captain America have
have those big budget action sequences, but I also liked those two. That liked, Captain America was kind of campy and fun. I liked Thor more than I liked Captain and America. And Thor had, I like how it was grounded in kind of right. Earth and Natalie Portman. <laughs> Good. That's the way to this say Natalie Portman. This is how I'm saying Emma Stone, Absolutely. Natalie Portman. Um, Kung Fu Panda 2. I didn't really care for Kung Fu. Didn't care for No, nah, I wouldn't I, say that it's one of the better films. I, of the I year. disagree because I really liked the first Kung Fu Panda when I did not anticipate it, and I thought the second one was also really good, if not almost a little more heartfelt than the first one. Um, right. And I have The Help Down, which again is a really good drama. I think this The Help year. one of the better movies of it's the year. It's really good. Mm -hmm. I also wrote The Beaver. I didn't I, see that. That's a Mel Gibson Mel movie. Gibson kind of dug Foster a hole, film. and I don't think anyone else is going to see it either, no. but I have to tell you, it's a great movie. I heard it's a great performance. I actually didn't see that one. I know it's a Jodie Foster film, yep. and his meltdown occurred uh, shortly, right around the release <laughs> right of that day, the and it, they didn't know what to do with the movie, yeah. and it kind of lost its audience. Because it's actually a really well done movie, and right. it's a shame he lost his audience. Um, Palm Wonderful presents the greatest movie ever sold. This is a documentary. Is that the one Morgan Spurlock? Morgan Spurlock, who yeah. made one of my favorite documentaries Super ever. Super Size, Size me. me. I love it. Um, I've seen a couple others of his. Uh, Osama Bin Laden, he did right. one on him. This one's actually really, really good, where he actually goes around and tries to, to make money for the documentary he's actually making right now. He's so, selling advertising for the documentary And I like he's the, the, the suit that he wears looks like a, <laughs> looks like a Winston <laughs> Cup team. You know, he's got patches of advertisers all over. Advertising. It yeah. almost looks like something from Idiocracy. I don't yeah. remember that movie. They had all advertisements Luke on them. Yeah. yeah, that was good too. And and, and so it's, it's really good if you like Super Size I actually didn't see that one either. It's good, I think you'd like it. Um, and, and the really quick, two little ones I didn't anticipate to like as much. Source Code. Okay, I did um, like Source Code. Which I saw was one of those things I hadn't seen any previews and I walked into it and was surprised. And Fast Five. Oh, I loved Fast Which Five. Which I loved too, and again, you know how it was burned out on Mission Impossible? Right. I really wasn't that interested in, in they Fast They reinvigorated that movie franchise, anymore. and they actually successfully started the summer movie, fran the summer movie yeah, season, the excuse me, right? in like May? April because April. of that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I said, throw in The Rock when you have a fledging series, <laughs> and it's just going <laughs> to knock it right back up. That's right, absolutely, because they're going to do it with uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth Part 2. That's right, G.I. Joe Part 2. G.I. Joe Part 2. Uh, yeah, he, he really shows up there in the sequels. Okay, some of mine, uh, Crazy Stupid Love, we already touched base on that oh, one. Yeah. Another one, that a couple that just missed the top five for me would be The Descendants with George Clooney. Right. Uh, just a warm... Uh, great film, a very wonderful slice of life about this real person. And George Clooney's that type of an actor that can play a real person just as much as he can play an action hero. He can, for sure. I think he can actually convey more emotions being a real individual than he does being these over the top right. characters. Now, I didn't see The Descendants, but is there actually sound effect and music accompaniment, or is it like The American? Well, it's not like The American, <laughs> and it's not like Solaris either, because George Clooney doesn't always make the best movies of the year. But I will tell you, with The Ides of March, which is another one that's on my list the, uh, I, I loved the Ides, Ides of March, March was a great I movie about that. and The Descendants was a great movie another one that I just saw actually yesterday was War Horse I think that's a fantastic film yep, I the saw Adventure the play actually oh, saw really? the play on Broadway that's cool it was wonderful it was fantastic the movie was very very good and then some other uh, three other ones The Adventures of Tintin fantastic animated film another Spielberg movie back to back great movies well, that's and then two that came out early in the year that are probably easily overlooked one was a horror film called Insidious oh, with yeah, Patrick yeah. Wilson Patrick Wilson Fantastic horror film. Really? Strong story. Very creepy. I think this is what most horror films huh. try to accomplish and, and often fail miserably. Huh. But Insidious was a great film. And another movie called Hannah, which is essentially yeah. like Salt it's with uh, Angelina Jolie. Like, it's a very much the similar plot, but only it's much better than the movie Salt. It's this uh, movie about a, a girl that's raised as an assassin by her dad, and she goes after the people that have you know wronged her. And it's just in your hmm. face, no holds barred action and it's this teenage girl that's beautiful and it's like a it's like a hidden tiger in a, <laughs> in, a in a beautiful body it's a wonderful wonderful film oh, cool. okay well those are the honorable mentions that we have and we're just gonna get to the uh, the top five and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Chris's envelopes for the top five best of the year <laughs> and he's gonna take mine and we're gonna open up each other's and we're gonna discuss them and as usual and I've said this in years past these uh, envelopes have been under the tight security of Price Waterhouse those are the people that successfully guard the Academy Award nominations and winners. So, That's right. You know, so next, maybe next year we'll get some footage of them like in the vault like they always do at the prior to the Academy <laughs> Award show. Okay, well, we'll get to Chris's number five okay. best film Wait, of the year. Before you open it okay, up. Okay, before we open it up. Let me just up, preface my top five. I'd give them a drum saying, roll, but we don't have any. <laughs> by saying that these are our personal favorites. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're going to differ a little bit here. No, no, and it's, op it's like but, I said, it's open to interpretation. But also, I can't really say that my top five is in order for myself um, because I found that 
my top five spanned so many different genres this year mm -hmm. that I have a hard time putting one over the other. So I can I can tell you for sure that you can That's sort of fine. mix so, and match. So you're kind my of picking like the best of the genres. Yeah, I would say mine are okay. the best of my favorites. These are all the ones that I wanted to see more than once. Now I will say that great. mine I'm actually trying to count down what I think are the top five best films of the year from the fifth I'm best the to the first best. So, right. but it's like I said, there's no right or wrong. Where you know it doesn't really matter. Every, right. Everything's open to interpretation. So okay. his fifth best film of the year He's is. The Transformers, The Dark of the Moon. <laughs> now, I didn't give this a super high recommendation, but I didn't bash this movie either. No. I actually think it's the best of the franchise that we've seen. Mm. Go ahead, run yeah, with I it. Yeah, I mean, I disagree with that, but I, I will tell you that the Transformers franchise, you either love it or you hate it, okay? And a lot of people, I think, have lost sight of the fact that the movie franchise started as a blockbuster summer action franchise. Mm -hmm. Every two years, a new one came out on 4th of July weekend. Which is and I summer think, movie, blockbuster weekend. And that's weekend. the point. And I think people are starting to go to it, and they're starting to expect the King's Speech out of the plot. And I'm going, it's Transformers. It's right. Michael Bay. It's an action movie. And if you go in with the right attitude, it's fun. Now, if you're a fan of the franchise, in my opinion, Dark of the Moon, well, first of all, was leaps and bounds above Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah, but there was problems with Revenge but of the Fallen. But right. there was writing problems right. and stuff. And there you was could still tell because that movie was terrible. There's still a lot. If you like the franchise, there's still a lot in there to like, but there's a lot not I to like. I thought this was very redeeming. This one actually is great. It has a great, you know, small but great story. Right. And it's dark. I mean, it is the dark it's of the moon. definitely a mature more mature film it than really the other is. two. It really is. And to me, the last 45 minutes in Chicago is exactly what I wanted Terminator Salvation to be, which was an all-out battle between robots and humans, showing that the humans can hold their own, even though the Autobots were on their side. Well, and 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 it's I love that last 45 minutes. Well, and um, I would say, so. even though I don't, I think this is one of the best films of the year. What I will say is, I think for the the person out there that enjoys this kind of movie, this is the granddaddy yep. of all films like this. This is the this is the no holds barred, mm -hmm. bombs dropping for three hours straight. And yeah. if you can't get, if you don't think you get your money's worth out of this one, yeah. then I don't know what to tell you. I agree with you. I mean, to me, the first one is still the best of the three because it sets up the story in a slow way. It reveals things. It has more natural, funny scenes in it, and it's well done. But if you like the Transformers, and here's the problem with, if for some reason, Bay bashing has become a religion now. No, I don't like that. And Michael I'm not Bay. quite, I don't quite understand. I think it's because the vocal minority is very vocal. Right. And other people can't formulate their own opinions. They're almost afraid to say, I like this. I like my Because they don't want to get, I want to get yelled at. And I'm like, you know what? Enjoy what you enjoy. Right. I don't make any apologies for saying this is my favorite. I saw it a ton of times. I'm a fanboy of Transformers who can right. see past his 80s bedroom window and, and even enjoy something else. He only tells me that he screams <laughs> Optimus twice. I swear to God, I counted it 32 times. When 32. I was well, you saw the director's cut. Um. <laughs> it was it was the advanced special edition where he yells Optimus 31 more exactly. times. Exactly. He's not even near that. But you know what? You know what it is though. If you're a fan of like Lord of the Rings and stuff like mm -hmm. that, to me the movies are like your wet dream. Right. Because wow, this is what I would want. And if you're a fan of the Transformers franchise, the movies are to me. And and because of the movies, they have brought the name back into the world. It has become a worldwide phenomenon right. now. There are three or four toy lines. There's Transformers Prime on Hub, which is amazing. Right. I mean, we get so much great Transformers stuff. I just and it's said right, I've never Michael even seen Bay. that, so. Yeah, he's, he's, being, he's, being, he's being nice over here, but the point is I, like, I really love the movie, Maybe and we'll if you like that one. series, you'll enjoy it. Maybe we'll get to my fifth movie. Do you want to do somewhere. yours now? Can we do that? Okay. <laughs> One more thing. The one part about the... All right. I think he's getting royalties from the Transformers movies. Well, I so hope go so. out and buy it. I hope so. My fifth best movie. Oh. The Help. I think The Help is actually stand out one of the best films of the year, hands down. It's really good. It, 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 I, I want to say that this film tackles head-on uh, issues that most films, I think, intentionally shy away from. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not a strong story like The Transformers. However... Right. <laughs> That's fine. I can take it. I, just I can take it. No, honestly, though, I, 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 understand, I understand totally. But I, I do think that this is a movie I think that everybody that watches this movie can learn something from it. it. Really you can good. learn from a time period and you can actually feel the pain that people suffered in that time period. And I just think it was really, really well done. And once again, it has Emma Stone and anything with Emma Stone. I'd pay to see Emma Stone sit in a chair for two hours and do nothing, <laughs> I think. So 
You think, that, is that an eBay thing? Can I actually auction, you know, cause she auctioned Jim Carrey tried it, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. You know what I loved about the help too was um, the performance is just all around. Absolutely. Emma Stone was great. But Octavia Spencer. Octavia Spencer. I mean, every single oh person gosh. that was solid. And I mean, they all deserve some kind of Absolutely. something, recognition yes. at least. I think they're wonderful. No, so. it, was a, it was a great, great film. That's all you have to say about the help. I talked about Transformers for an hour and a half. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to just. I apologize, everybody. No, I know. That doesn't well, like we see how passionate he is about the Transformers, so. Okay.